Hey guys, welcome to Linden Trout Farm, Trout Ponds, Trout Hatchery. This is where it all starts, guys. Now, I gave you some news a while ago about the old pond. It was a no-go, so we decided we were going to go with two new ponds. So we had options. Now, I haven't told you guys which pond we chose. I know you guys voted on those. In a second, we're going to go visit that new pond that we picked. But first, we're going to try to catch a fish from the pond. Now, thankfully, I have a sponsor for this video. Catch Co Company, Carl's Bait and Tackle delivered me a bunch of lures to pick from. I'm gonna tie on here, I'm gonna see if I can drag it through the water without catching a fish as a challenge, because I think it's almost impossible to do that. And then we're gonna pick up our fish from Clark. He's gonna meet up with us, and we're gonna head over to the new pond. You guys ready for this? Buckle up, because the pond series is going to keep going. Looks like there's a few fish in there. I don't know about you, but <laughs> there's, it's like it's like a feeding frenzy of sharks out there. Imagine you throw your line out there. It wouldn't be too long before you had a nice meal. That's for sure. So this feed is uh, it is pelleted feed. So this comes from New Brunswick. Most of it comes from New Brunswick. Um, so it's fed a variety of different things are in this fish food. There's fish meal is one of the primary ingredients because fish were created to eat fish in a natural setting or eat other uh, organic matter as well. So there's also some soybean meal and cornmeal, some other natural plant-based proteins. And the reason why those plant-based proteins are in there is to try and reduce the environmental impact, make it as ecologically sustainable as possible. Um, but we do make sure that we buy the best quality feed for our fish, because better feed makes better fish. All right guys, got a big box of lures from Catch Co, Carl's Bait and Tackle. Check out the website, you guys check it out, please check it out. So we got a lot to choose from. We got the 10,000 fish, 10,000 fish summer shad. We got Biospawn. We got, that's the 10,000 fish. This is Max Action Claw Design. So that looks like a crawfish. But I think what's most attractive to me is this bull shad because um, it looks kind of like a little mini rainbow trout. So I think if I throw a really mini rainbow trout in there, that it's going to be hard for those other trout to resist. So I'm going to tie this on and uh, we're going to drag this through. We'll see how long this little baby trout lasts in the big, the big boy water. Ready guys? All right. Let's see if we can get one cast through here without catching a fish. I'm hoping we get a big fish. We'll see what happens. Oh, there we go. Oh, I missed him. <laughs> Did you see that? Just missed him. Big guys. Oh, there we go. 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 Oh, nice fight. This is a little guy. Not the biggest of the bunch, but we'll take it. There we go. <laughs> nice little guy. Right in the lip. I was a couple casts, I had to convince him to grab it because I think it looks like, it almost looks too much like a little rainbow. And these guys are too much on the pellet feed. But that was a good hook set, right in the lip. Perfect. Actually, this guy might be healthy enough, we can let him go. There we go. Let's see if we can't catch a bigger one. All right, guys. Well, this little guy here, I tried a few times. Uh, it's not working. They're shying away from this little rainbow trout. It's like they don't want to eat their little baby brother, which is funny. So I'm going to tie on uh, another little uh, vial bug here. Uh, Biosent enhanced. This is Biospawn. So I think maybe they'll be more attracted to this. We'll give it a shot and see what happens. We got to rip it and pause, rip it and pause, rip it and pause. They're going to grab it on the pause. I must think I need a little bit of a trailer hook on there because they're just going, there we go, there we go, there we go. There's the fish. That's what we wanted. There we go. There's the fish. Oh, good fight. That guy engulfed it. There we go. Nice fish. All right. Here's our fish. There we go. Got him. Let's beach this guy. He took that thing. We got our fish. There we go. Look at that. This stuff works on all kinds of fish. That's a nice rainbow. Beauty. Well, we got ourselves our fish. Now we're going to go meet up with Clark and we're going to head over to the new pond. I'm excited to show you guys exactly what's up. Guys, please support Catch Co. Carl's Bait and Tackle. Go down there, sign up, become a member get 30% off and you get additional savings if you join Carl's Club. So I think you guys have been following this from the start. You know we've been raising the fish from egg. Um, so Clark's gonna pull from these pools here 
Uh, I think they're about eight, 10 inches now. Tuck's gonna come over, scoop them out, put them in the truck. He's got like a pickup truck outfitted with like a water container barrel. It's aerated and uh, that goes right to the new pond. You guys are gonna be excited to see what the new pond, see which one we settled on. I'm pretty excited to let you guys know which one we picked too. So let's get scooping. We're actually gonna be taking these from a small raceway here at the farm. So these fish were raised from egg uh, from our own breeding stock on site. And uh, so they've been raised the whole way up in our own hatchery here. They're actually around eight to 10 inches now. So that's a little small for pan size. Typically you wanna have kind of a 12 inch fish for pan size, or you can go larger to like a two pound fish, depending on what kind of uh, dining experience you want. But these should be pan size edible range uh, in about three months, depending on what food sources are in that pond. It sounds like it's got lots of vegetation, lots of frogs. Um, flies, things like that, that would allow it to be able to allow those fish to be able to, to have a great food source and grow really quick and hopefully put up a good fight when you catch them. As you know, we had a choice of two ponds. I know you guys overwhelmingly preferred pond number two because pond number two is a lot bigger. Well, we're at pond number one. We're unloading the fish right now. Got one of uh, Clark's employees dumping them in. It's always fun to see them go in. Pond number two wasn't super interested in getting fish put in, for starters, so I never really heard a positive response. Well, Clark is kind of run into a roadblock, so you gotta help him out. You gotta go to Linden Pond as soon as they open, and you gotta fish the snot out of that pond. They've delayed him opening his pond. And because of that, we didn't have the thousand fish budget that we had originally to go into the big pond. So anyway, we're making do with the small pond. So 200 fish is the right size, the right number of fish to go into the small pond. We're gonna grab the aerator. We're gonna set that up with the owner. Hopefully he's done with that. Get some oxygen pumping in there. His fish look happy already. They're doing a good job kind of spreading around and uh, we're gonna have to protect them because we already know that there's mink here. So we might set up some trail cameras around the pond edges. And uh, I've got another thing to share before we go too. I think this is an interesting thing. You guys saw the moose head over here getting cleaned out. So I've got some of my own skulls I'm gonna drop into the pond and uh, we're gonna get those ones cleaned up too. So let's get the aerator and uh, let's get some oxygen in there because these fish are gonna need it for sure. We got the dugout dude aerator here. As soon as I turn this thing over, as soon as it gets a little bit of sun, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it starts pumping air. So all we have to do is get a mounting bracket down here Put that into the ground and stick it on and then there's a stone it's called a it's called a stone it floats well it doesn't float it sinks this goes down here at the bottom we connect that with a hose it's really super simple that connects the stone the stone goes on the ground the stone pumps uh, the air out it's all air driven all direct feed there's no battery systems at all so that's going to blow air from the aerator from the solar system here, down through the hose and up through the stone. Does that make sense? As long as the sun's out, when every time the sun's out, it's gonna fire up. All right guys, I told you we had a little bit of a surprise here. I got uh, some kind of grossy skulls here. I got a bear skull, I got a coyote skull. So along the lines of what the owner's done with the moose skull, he's dropped it down in there. Uh, I didn't really account for the fact there's turtles in here, so <laughs> that's the next thing. I'm gonna tie a rope to it, I'm gonna sink them down so that turtle can't just take them and then end up in the bottom of the pond with my skulls. I'm gonna have to monitor them because I know the lower jaw is gonna separate from the upper jaw at some point in time when it gets loose enough. Uh, and I don't wanna lose the lower jaw, I wanna keep it a full skull. So the thing is the minnows are going to pick apart the flesh the brains, everything. They're gonna work all the crevices out. And so they're gonna do that dirty job for me. I have done European mounts before where you uh, boil, scrape, boil, scrape, wash, and all that junk, and it's not fun. It's like the sickest job in the world. So let nature do the work for us. All right, every dirty job requires gloves. I definitely don't want to get bear meat on my hands because they carry all sorts of parasites and diseases. Ooh, throw those skulls in the little trap there. That's gonna make sure that the turtle can't steal them, can't get the rope around them, and I don't want that turtle to steal the lower jaw or the whole head for that matter. So we're gonna have to let loosen it up with time. So just on the other side of the pond here, there's a nice grassy area leading up to it. Pond's over here, but this area has been all dug up by, looks like skunks or raccoons, 
pulling the ground up looking for insects and worms. So we're gonna put a trail camera up here. So first order of business for permission for the pond is we gotta get rid of some of these nasty animals that are making a mess. We're gonna figure out where these animals are doing, which animals are causing the problem, and we might have to set some live traps to get rid of them. Thought I'd throw some feed out just to see if one would come up, but they're more onto the insects, which I guess is a good, good thing. All right guys, we're gonna fish those skulls out. They've been uh, sitting in the water for a little bit. Uh, originally I was gonna leave them in there, but I found some uh, minnow traps, and the minnow traps are gonna allow the minnows to actually get at the flesh and work them away. So I've got a modified trap here. This is for a crawfish. Um, they can slip in the corners here. So that'll allow the minnows to come in and out. And I'll put the bear claws, I got a bear paw, bear claw. Zach Fowler actually wants them uh, from the bear that we shot on the Wilderness Living Challenge. So that are gonna go in there and uh, you know, all that hair and that stuff will all separate and I'll be able to get the uh, good stuff and get rid of all the bad stuff. Now I'm just hoping that the skulls actually fit in the cages because if they don't, we have a big problem. Here's one bare foot, two bare foots, there's three bare foots, bare feet. <laughs> that sounds funny, bare feet. <laughs> oh, I make myself laugh. Alrighty guys, we managed to get this tied up. So Zach's been looking for these fingernails, claws for a long time. He wants to give some to his daughter, daughters as a memento from the Wilderness Living Challenge. All right, so these can go in the drink. Next, we'll do the skull. Well, I'm super happy that those fit in there because if they didn't fit in there, I'd have to figure out another solution to the problem. So this is ordinarily a crayfish trap, a crawfish. See, uh, Bob Hansler designed this trap. It's gonna wire this shut. And then a turtle is not gonna be able to steal our things. So they're gonna be happily trapped inside here and the minnows are gonna be able to come in and out as they please through the two portal ends. So that'll go in the drink too. And then we'll tie these down to make sure we don't lose them. So that's one job done. Show you the aerator. <laughs> uh -oh. all righty guys we got the dugout dude aerator system all up and running we just bolted it down to one of the decorative rocks down here it's already pumping air as you can tell it's like slightly overcast uh, we do have to do a better job pulling the stone out into the middle there because um, it's all kind of flipped over I think it is doing a really good job the fish are on the feed already and uh, it looks good. The water's pumping or the air's pumping up in here. The fish look real happy. I can see them swimming around. But if you guys are interested in anything from this video, check the description, the dugoutdude.ca. This is direct air pump system. Works really good. All you gotta do is put it on a post and aim it at the sun and it fires up right away. So those fish, they're loving the air. 
They're loving the feed. They're loving their new home. We'll keep updating the series. The owner's already talked about making a waterfall, so I think he's gonna rope me into giving them a hand on doing that. And uh, we'll keep updating. We've got some algae already. That'll be something we'll look into. Might have to get the alginator. Maybe we'll just go around with the canoe and scoop it up. But uh, lots of little projects. There'll always be more. And I do want to snorkel. And I'll keep you guys updated as to how these skulls turn out. You gotta love the magic of TV because I get to check the camera now. You guys get to see it all at the same time. I'm wondering if there's been a skunk through here or not. All right, guys, let's check to see what we got. 100% we got a skunk right away. First nighttime impression is of a skunk. We got another nighttime one, that's a raccoon. Oh, look at that. There's a freaking turkey back here. That's a hen turkey. Wonder if anybody else came through. Just one little lone hen by the looks of things. We got some intel anyway. Oh, look, a little bunny. Little cottontails up through. There's a skunk. We got another skunk at night. Another skunk. So we got some activity back here. Yeah, the owner is right. There is skunks coming through here. So that might be something we need to take care of for him. Uh, cottontail, turkey, and a raccoon, of course. The raccoon would be a bycatch. We don't want to get rid of the raccoons, but they are probably digging up the lawn too. I'll have to find out what he wants to do 